Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Good morning. Blessings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So glad to be a part of the kingdom of God, to honor him, not just in lip service, but in how we live our lives. And so those of you that are joining online this morning, blessings to you, those that are streaming the service, and for those of you that are gathered here. Uh, I am so thankful to God for the week, so thankful for God for the strength, so thankful for God this morning, and certainly I bless him and give him all the praise and all the glory in what God is doing and what he's going to do. And so this, with that being said, I want to just congratulate all the graduates <clears throat> that graduate. I know this week it has been um, um, the two schools that I serve, Westlake and North Point, both have students there that uh, I know. And congratulations to those who have graduated, Erica and Lawrence Jr., um, going on to the next venture of college, which is exciting. And we just pray that they have an awesome time. Uh, as they start their college uh, life. I think it's a wonderful time in their life to be away from home, to learn about themselves, and hopefully they keep God first. Hallelujah. Lord, keep God first. Amen. Blessings. Well, with that being said, let's get into the Word. Let's pray, and let's just honor God this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, so grateful this uh, coming up is the last full week of school. Uh, kids get out on the 15th. Yes. Uh, so happy about that, that the kids get out. Uh, if I never see them again, it'll be wonderful. <laughs> what I just say is a joke. Uh, but uh, be glad when it's over. And uh, um, man, whew, that's all I can say. I'm kind of excited about this week coming up. And hopefully the Lord will bless me and the kids will continue to pray for them as we um, lift them up. Father, we bless you this morning. Thank you, so thank you, so grateful, God, for you are an awesome God, a mighty God. And, Lord, you do wonderful things. You do just things I just can't explain sometimes, Lord, how you bless and how you use people. And, and Lord, how we encourage people, Lord God. Lord, I believe when we get to heaven, Father, that there's going to be a time that, that we won't realize the people who poured into our lives, Lord God, those who have continuously prayed for us, Lord God. Um, without ever saying a word to that person, without ever mentioning their name to them personally or talk about stories. It's simply that time that we spend with you and personal, personal relationship, personal time with you, Lord, um, with situations and things that are transpiring, um, not only in our families, but in our country, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I just can't imagine in my mind, God, um, I watched the little uh, kindergartners get on the you know, on the bus, they're just innocent little kids, Lord, um, uh, wild as ever. But, Lord, they're, they're yours. They're just innocent little kids. And I can't imagine, Father, someone uh, want to kill a little child or, or, or a young adult, for that case, or any adult. And so I've just prayed this morning that we're trying to fix it by laws. We're trying to fix it by legislation, Lord God. And, and none of these things, none of these things seem to work. You said, uh, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, you said you will heal our land. And yet America has not even heeded, churches have not even heeded the clarion call to return to you, Father, and return to the word of God that's able to transform a life, able to transform a person out of darkness into your marvelous light. Lord, if we really understood the power of the word of God, Father, I believe that revival is coming. But not as we deem for it to be. I believe revival is coming. And, Lord, I believe there's going to be a last chance effort, oh, God, to reach those out there who are not coming into this church and not coming into the doors of this building. But it could be coworkers. It could be strangers. It can be uh, family members, Lord, that the revival starts in the home and it spreads out, God. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Oh, God, give you glory and praise that you 
are still in control and sovereign over all things, whether it's abortion laws or whether it's homosexual laws or transgender laws or, or, or money, whatever it is, God, you're in control. And what you have allowed is to bring us to a place that hopefully, oh God, we will humble ourselves and, 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 and pray and seek your face. And I ask these things in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you use each of us in our, in our own little environment from which we have influence, Lord God, that we would encourage and uplift and join together in prayer in Jesus' name, Lord, to see revival happen once again in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. That's my prayer this morning. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 8, the story uh, many of you know very well. Um, um, I'm just going to... Uh, um, talk about it and, and, and what the Lord has given me. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Oh, thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows what the people need. It knows what they need to hear, whether in a level of encouragement or in a spirit of reminding or bring, bring into remembrance those things that you already have been taught and those things that you already know. So in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8, the Bible says, uh, the centurion, it said, um, uh, let's start at verse number six. That's where it starts at. And the Lord, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously torment. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, have not found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same, self same hour. This is just one of many stories, many stories of the centurion who evidently was of Greek nationality, not Jewish, not connected to the Jewish church of any kind. But what, what caused him to, to, to go to Jesus? What, what caused him to reach out to, to Jesus that his servant was sick? Because what I'm finding out is that whoever or whatever has influence in your life, that's what we lean to go to. We lean to go to whatever have influence in our lives, whether it's uh, somebody that we know or somebody we love or somebody we respect. We have a tendency to, to uh, go towards that direction, and it's normally showed in our behavior. But this centurion evidently heard about Jesus and came to Jesus and said something remarkable that many uh, Christians today simply miss the fact. He said, but speak the word only. This is the gist of the message this, this morning is the word of God is faithful. It is faithful. But many people have have taken man's word over God's word. It is evident in our lives. It's evident even in being believers that, that we allow the influence of man to, to really dictate our behavior and how we act and how we move. There are many people that have influence in your children's lives more than the influence that you have. Because there is a trust that's built. There is, there is a connection that, that's built. And so they have a tendency, and we have a tendency, to listen to people that either we like or people that we have grown to maybe read a book or, or have studied. We have a tendency to lean towards what they say, and whatever they say we consider at some point truth in what they say. 
And it's remarkable that many believers today are more, are more connected with the government than they are the word of God. The word of God is simply just a, 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 a means to an end. When the, when, the, when, the, when the thing of life is the glorification of God. But the word of God is faithful. I can't imagine how many things I've said that I didn't follow through with. I mean, even in my life, there are many things I said I was going to do I haven't done yet. And many things I said I was going to finish I haven't completed yet. And, and, and so my, that means that my word sometimes is what? Inconsistent. Inconsistent. But God's word, not one iota. You, if you can find it, show it to me. God's word has never, ever not fulfilled itself. It has never Never in all of history has God's word ever failed. But people have a tendency, and, 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 I, and I, I, I can't, I'm not judging you. I'm not, um, I'm looking at you, I'm only looking at my own life of, of, of what has influence in my life. What, what causes me uh, 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 to, to want to adhere and obey the word of God? What what causes me to, to lean to? I'm, I'm not a good husband just because I'm a good husband. I, I try to be a good husband because of the word of God. Uh, I try to abide and live by the principles of the word of God that, that causes my behavior and my actions to, uh, to manifest uh, uh, that that has influence in my life. And what I'm finding is that the word of God doesn't have influence in many believers' lives. I'm not talking about you. If that fits, then you have to wear the shoe. But not many believers uh, 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 really are here to what the power of the word. There's, there's power in the word of God. There, there's power that, that's released in the word of God when we simply obey it. And we don't understand the awesomeness of God's word. To, uh, to live by, to operate by, brings many blessings. And this is what the Lord says. Said, many, many believers never experience the awesome presence of God. Many believers never experience the, the, presence, the awesome presence of God. They, they have, their connection to God is based on somebody else's shout or based on somebody else's dance or based on somebody else's testimony. The question is, what has influence in your life and, and what causes you or uh, 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 God's word to have influence in your life? And we has influence in my life in such a way that it caused a dynamic change in my life and in my behavior and to, to grow to an understanding of my relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But many believers never experience the awesomeness of this relationship in the presence of God simply because you have mouth service, but there is no heart connection to God. There's a whole bunch of mouth service uh, when it comes down to uh, sometimes believers can talk a good game, but when the manifestation of the word being manifested in your life is at an absence, simply because you can't expect for the word to uh, produce the fruit that will bring God glory if you don't obey it. Simply put, many people will never experience the, uh, the awesomeness of a relationship with God because you know why? They simply don't obey it. Or on the other hand, they don't believe it. But isn't it amazing? Please don't get offended. They say wear a mask. Everybody wear a mask. I see homeless people wear masks. I see drug users down on Eastover wear masks. I see people in their car wear masks. Based on what? Based on an edict from the government that says this, and if you believe it, guess what you do? You wear a mask. And this is not a, this is not a, 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 a down on people who wear masks and people who don't. I'm only making a point. The point that I'm making is that we uh, adhere to the laws of man, and many believers do not adhere to the law of God. It has, what has influence over your life? What causes you to act the way that you act? And I'm looking at society, and the government is coming up with certain rules. Now they're withholding uh, um, uh, lunch uh, 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 vouchers from schools if they don't adopt transgender policies. And yet the church becomes silent. You know, I wonder, I was driving the other night coming home, and it was like 2.30 in the morning, and I'm at a stoplight, at the stoplight, and it's red. And I stopped. And I looked around and said, hmm, 
It's nobody here. Why don't I go through the light? But I don't go through the light. There's nobody around. There's not a car in sight. But yet I allow the law to, to permeate my behavior in such a way that I wait for the light to turn green. And I've been, I've been over and over again, and I'm seeing how we so connected to, to what is right. Listen, it's right to stop at the stop sign, right? It's right, it's right to stop at the, when his light is red. But why do you do it? Because the law has what? Influence over your life and your behavior. And if the law can have that kind of influence, what about the word of God? What about if we simply obeyed the word? Do you realize what God can use you for to accomplish in his name? And, and yet I'm seeing churches and people and, and, and people getting mad at each other. Do you got your shot? No, I don't want to be around you. You ain't got no shot. It, it divided families. It separated neighborhoods. It, it caused us to, to isolate ourselves based on what? What a man said. What they said scientifically. But the, what we adhered to was we heard and saw the people that were dying. That influenced us and our behavior because most of us, we don't want to die. So we took precautions to do what? Wear masks. We took precautions, what? To get shots. We took precautions, why? Because we believe what they said. You would never have done it if you didn't believe it. So it shows it has influence in your life. What they said has influence in your life. And there's nothing wrong with that. If the doctor says, hey, you take this high blood pressure medicine and you got to eat with it, follow the directions. Don't be stupid. But when it comes down to God's word and it comes down to hearing the Holy Spirit, we become deaf. And that's why many believers don't experience the awesomeness of, 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 the, of God's presence and power. You can't, you, can't, you can't judge your life by how I live mine. You can't do what I do. You can't, you can't operate the way I operate because if God haven't told you, you will be operating outside of God's will for your life. God didn't tell you to go out there and evangelize. God didn't tell you to do that. You, it, to go out there would, would be a, a, a out of God's will for you. But for me, I only have an edict to simply obey God and his word. And I need the word of God to have more, more influence over my life than, guess what, man's word, Amen. than man's doctrine. Because I'm finding that obeying God's word is releasing blessings in my life and fruit, fruit to the glorification of God. I'm talking to people who are looking for hope. People who are looking for an answer. People who need to hear about God through Jesus Christ. Many quote God's word, read God's word, even meditate on God's word and never experience true relationship with him. The centurion simply believed what he said and his actions showed it in the uh, 13th verse. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way. Once Jesus spoke the word, he said, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, see, when you believe, when you believe it, a corresponding action is going to be manifested. And I just believe what God told me. I'm just walking into things that God told me. I'm doing things in secret, not openly, as God told me. I'm really learning to take the word and not just be a hearer, but a what? Doer of God's word. And I want people to have a relationship with God. I want you to be able to, to talk to God, communicate with God, uh, uh, not based on what you see with your eyes, not based on what the, uh, 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 the occurrence or event that is, that is transpiring in your life, but simply believing what he said in his word. Live by the word. The word is everything. I woke up this morning and I was praying and I said, you know, I'm not a good husband just to be a good husband. I'm a good husband because of the word of God. I'm learning to love beyond my capabilities because of the word of God. I'm learning and have learned to forgive simply because of what the word of God says. The word of God says, if you don't forgive, you cannot be what? I'm telling you, the word of God is faithful. The word of God is faithful. It is faithful to the wicked and it is faithful to the righteous. It's going to fulfill itself. 
It's going to bring about God's mandate and God's will and God's purpose. No matter what you say out your mouth, you can declare all you want. I declare this and I declare that. I deem this to happen. If it ain't in God's will, you just, guess what? You're like a, 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 a barbecue grill. You're just blowing it out of smoke. But when you obey the word of God, when you live by the principle of the word, the benefits of, of living by will produce the fruit that will bring what? God glory. Hallelujah. I'm so, I'm so excited about, about God's word is faithful. See, I don't care You're talking to someone that, that, don't know, that doesn't know God. And I watch these preachers go on these news shows. And, and, and the newscaster who's not saved will quote a scripture. That's just pain crazy. Don't have no understanding of it. Just something they heard or something they read for their journalistic uh, uh, news presentation. And, they, they, and they, so they, they would tell the guy, well, doesn't the Bible say you should love? The Bible says that man, any man does not have the spirit of God, he is what? None of his. And it says that, it said that those that don't have the spirit of God, it said even the simplicity of the word is foolishness unto them. Why sit there and argue with them? Why sit there and argue with, with, with a Muslim that don't want to hear it or a Hindu or anybody unless the Holy Spirit should shine on them the glorious light of the gospel and should open their eyes, they would never come to an understanding of who Jesus really is and what the word is really uh, 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 saying to that individual. And that's why you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're saved, you're filled. Then we have to grow in it. We have to begin to mature in it. And so it comes by, by, by understanding that the word of God cannot fail. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, I have been through things. I, God has sent me through challenges. But here's what I want to propose to you this morning. Many of us have prayed prayers that simply we didn't think God answered. We done cried. We done read Psalms. We done quoted Proverbs. We remind ourselves, but, but it seems like when we pray, it hasn't happened or come to pass. And let me tell you something. When you find yourself in that kind of of situation, and you're not sure, uh, uh, and you start checking yourself. Maybe I sin is, is, is because now you're looking for an emotional uh, uh, a connection with God. You're trying to feel this thing. Well, maybe I sin. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm holding unforgiveness. Maybe, maybe, maybe I've done something that made God. No, it has nothing in most cases to do with none of that. It's that at times, God puts us in situations that, that God said, I have a time to bring you out. I have a time to manifest what you have asked me according to my will, according to my purpose. And I know it may seem like I didn't hear you. I know it may seem like it's taken a long time. But I'm going to tell you something. If you talk to the Hebrew boys, they'll tell you their story. Talk to Daniel in the lion's den. He'll tell you his story. If you really understand, when I find myself and I've been praying about something, and it, I see no change with my natural eyes. I, I, I don't feel in my flesh that, that God, and I'm connecting with God, because I don't connect with God by my flesh. I connect with God, what? Through the Spirit. By, by, and when I say through the Spirit, please understand that, that it's not something spooky. When I say I connect with God by the Spirit, I mean obedience to his word. Yeah, I got that. I mean obeying his word. And so when I find myself, you know what I start doing? I start worshiping. I start worshiping. I start worshiping my way through. I start giving God praise. It is the most uncomfortable. It is the most, it's, it's, it's the most uh, uh, a strange environment that I've ever allowed myself to be in. That when I find that I done prayed about something and it seems like it's not moving, I learn to stay where he has me. And I bless your name, oh God. I give you all praise and all glory. You're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. You have never failed. Why do I do that? Because I know that the word of God is what? Faithful. God's word can't fail. Tell your neighbor, God's word can't fail. I don't know, people's words will fail, their words will, will let you down, but God's word will never, what, fail. But you can only know that when you have intimate relationship with God and through prayer. And when I say relationship, always connect to the word relationship, obedience to his word. 
because you can't have relationships without obedience. And you can't have uh, uh, obedience without faith in his word, like the centurion. Oh, but speak the word only. Boy, if we could tell people that, if people could go around and say, you know what? Instead of complaining about my situation, I'm going to just speak the word. Instead of talking about somebody, I'm going to just pray the word. Man, I found myself, I'm not being able to go for, I'm just going to worship God through his word. When you learn to do that, it takes the human aspect out. It takes your dependency on people out. Because your relationship with God has to be independent, not based on somebody else's relationship with God, not based on how they worship, not based on what they do. But you need to develop in your own spiritual walk this connection with God, because I'm going to tell you, you're going to need it in the coming days. Many don't understand that it's, it's the word that we should put all of our faith in. All of my faith is in the word of God. I sat on the side of the bed and said, Lord, my very existence, the reason that I'm still here, the reason that I'm, I have my mobility, I tell you, sometimes I'm acting like a 20-year-old. I, I have strength. I, I can do things. I, I still go running. I ride a bike whenever I get ready. I mean, I ain't talking about riding a bike just a block. I'm talking about riding 10, 12 miles one way. I mean, and I'm, and I'm asking God, what you doing here? You know, I was with some guys yesterday. We were riding, and the guy said, you know, I'm coming up on 60 years old. The guy said, yeah, I'm 58, you know, and the guy said, I'm already 61, 62 years old. And, they, and so we were, they were talking, and they said, how old are you, Daniel? I said, I'm 67. He said, boy, God preserving you. And I asked God, and they look a lot older than I, did, than I am. I'm telling you, they did. But they say, God preserving me, why? Because the word will preserve you when you what? Obey it. The word will heal you when you believe it. Now, now let's talk about that for a minute. How many times you done prayed for healing and it did not manifest? I still feel bad after I prayed. I still, I, you, because you, you, I know what you expect. I know what I expect. I expect when I pray, it's supposed to go away. Many times it didn't go right away. I'm going, God, what's going on here? Wait, wait, what are you doing? You say, whatever I ask in Jesus' name, you do it. Okay, I'm obeying the word. I'm, I'm, I'm living by the principles. I'm bearing fruit to your glory. What's the problem? After you've done all, stand. Worship. The hardest thing for me to do was to worship God when I know I wasn't feeling the best. When I wasn't feeling the best, I would put worship music on. And I, I kept uh, uh, hearing a song. This choir was singing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wrench like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Praise God for saving me. I just start worshiping because I know that as I worship. Why? Because of the word of God. Amen? And so people have to understand is that, is that our relationship with God is dependent on these things that I'm getting ready to give you. So I said many don't understand that it's the word that we put all of our faith in. All of God's promises that people declare to someone many times goes unfulfilled simply because we haven't learned yet how to worship where we are. We learn to worship and give God the glory where we are. It may not feel good. It's going to be uncomfortable at times. It's going to seem like um, uh, the challenge of life is stronger than, 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 you know, when I don't pray for. But if I stay there and I believe the word, he says, speak the word what? Only. So I speak the word in song. I pray the word in song. I give God glory. And guess what? He gives me the ability, amen, to be able to stand as he brings me through that situation. He says to the Israelites, when you go through the fire, I'll be with you. He didn't say he's going to take you out. When you go through the flood, he said, I'll be with you. And so there's a time that God allows to go through. Why? Because it's a time of growth. It's a time of maturing. It's a time that we learn to trust God and trust God. When I say trust God, I mean trust him at his word. His word should have more influence in your life than the government, than the president, than doctors. 
His word shall have more influence. If you go to the doctor, pray in the name of Jesus. I can't tell you how many people go to the doctor and get the wrong diagnosis or the wrong medicine that make you even sicker. And that's why I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, the doctor that I'm going to see, give him the right information. Let him give the right doctor. The Bible said pray about how many things? That's the word of God. Why don't we do it? Because sometimes we allow our flesh and our emotions and what we see with our eyes and, and to, to, get, to get involved that we forget to do what? Speak the word only. Not one promise of God has ever failed. Some leave the faith or stop believing altogether because what they prayed for didn't happen. Because they weren't taught how to stand in the mist when you're going through. They weren't taught, like at the, at the Red Sea, God always takes you to this end sometimes. And simply wants you to learn to worship him where you are. You can't keep talking about this thing. You got to now live it. Hallelujah. You got to live it. You got to live the word. And you live the word by simply obeying the word. But many and some have left the faith. Some have stopped believing altogether. And there are a number of reasons that it seems that God, that God has forgotten you. Many times people think that God has forgotten me. I can't tell you how many times people have told me, I done prayed about it. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, uh, went here. And, I, and, and guess what? And, and nothing happened. Why is that? Go to James chapter 3. Go to James chapter 3. See, the thing about it is that what I'm learning is that what has influence in your life? There are certain people that have influence in my life that I listen to. Why? Because their life is lining up with what they say. And there are certain people that don't have influence in my life because your words are not lining up with what they say. That's just my own personal preference. And if my words don't line up, my life don't line up, because I have said many things that I didn't follow through with. Because of circumstances, things that come involved, things that, that, that arise sometimes. But at least I'm mad enough, you know, if I, if I tell somebody something and I say, look, I'm not going to be able to make it. I'm, give, I'm calling you in advance. I'm trying to make my word good. But it can only become good when I begin to obey God's word. James chapter 3, look at verse 1. He said, my brethren, be not many masters knowing that we, receive, we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend in all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and is able to bridle the whole body. Three, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole bodies. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about by a very small helm, whatsoever the governor listeneth. Now, helm... It's on the bottom of the boat where, where the engine uh, shaft is. And the helm, is a, it moves with a steering wheel normally on the ship. And no matter how large the ship, it can have a large helm or a small one. And it comes down like that, and it goes back in. And what it does, when he turns it, it that little helm turns the whole boat no matter how big it is. And so that's his point that he's making, that a little, this little uh, 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 helm is able to uh, 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 drive the boat wherever it will. Number five, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts what? Great things. Behold how great a, ma a matter uh, it can start a, a, a forest fire. Number six, and the tongue is, is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth not just uh, the person, but the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, that has happened in many lives, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and a bird, and serpents, of things in the sea, is tamed, and have been tamed by mankind. But nobody can tame the, what, tongue. So what I'm finding out is that, is that we have to understand that everything that the Bible talks about, I saw myself. I saw myself. And I asked myself, am I that person? Am I really doing that? Is, 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 that, is that 
me. And so I have learned to, to, to taper my tongue and use my tongue for what? Worship. Use my tongue for what? And encouraging words. Use my tongue to express what I believe, which is what? The word of God. Hallelujah. And so this is what I'm learning. This is what I'm going to adhere to because what has produced in my life is the word of God. It has produced in my life a, 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 a behavior uh, to his word. And when I talk to people and, 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 I, and I listen or we talk about sports, I always bring up God. I always talk about the, the things of God. Go to Matthew 24, 35. Matthew 24 and 35. It's in the word. Why have it if you're not going to obey it? The police officer stand there and directs traffic. You obey him. Why? Because you don't want to get locked up or you don't want to get a ticket. Well, not obeying the word will get you something even worse if we don't obey the word because the word can only fulfill itself. The Bible says, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also what? Reap. It's the word of God. And you can't talk your way out of it. You can't. You can't. You can't talk your way out of it. Matthew 24, 35. Look what it says, 35. Heaven and earth shall what? Pass away. But what won't pass away? But my word shall not what? Not your word. His word shall not pass away. Everything that God spoken, it will be fulfilled. Every, per, every living thing dies. Why? Because that's what the word says. I'm just following what the word says. And there's people that get upset with that. Oh, you more holy than thou. I'm just following, I'm just living my life is predicated on God's word. My whole life is predicated on that. If I find myself uh, operating in a way that's not conducive to bring forth fruit to glory, the Holy Spirit put me in check. But he's not going to make me. He leaves it up to me to choose whether or not to obey God's word or to operate in my flesh, which is going to bring me some trouble down the road. And so I'm realizing more than ever that, that, they, that the church and people have simply left the word of God. Some have come with their own interpretation. Some of their own doctrines, arguing about this and arguing about salvation. Paul said, leaving the principles of baptism and salvation and let us go on to perfection. What do you mean by that? Let us go on living out the word, living it out, living out salvation, living out being a, a kingdom minded and, and, and kingdom uh, uh, citizens of the kingdom of God. Let us live it out. But people want to sit and fuss and argue about, about, about the word. I ain't got time to sit there and argue with you. There can be discussion. There's difference between discussion and argument. And most people don't know how to discuss. They only know how to argue. And if you don't get your point across, then you get mad and your whole attitude changed. Why? Because nobody uh, had agreed with you. Sometimes I don't understand things. I keep my mouth shut. When I don't have experience in I ask somebody that got experience. I'm not able to do that. I got to find somebody who can. But one thing I can realize, I can always and have and will from, from, from the moment that God opened my eyes to believe the word of God. And I simply believe it because what it says and how it changed my life. The word has literally changed. It ain't going to change your life because you read it or you get baptized. It changes your life when you begin to obey it. That's when the change comes. I start living it out. I start practicing the principles of love. I start living by Colossians chapter 3. Uh, put off all these, anger, wrath, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Line that one to it. I start putting those things in, in practice, and now the whole dynamic of my environment is changing. How I interact with people, I, I, uh, how, what they do, I, I, I change. And so I said, thank you, Lord, because I realize not in my own ability, but in the ability that God has given me. Go to John 17, 17. John 17 and 17. I'm telling you, the church has gotten away from the word of God, and it is crazy that we have literally abandoned what can actually save us and give us direction and peace in our life while we're here on earth. I don't, I'm not afraid to go out. I'm not afraid to go to the mall. I'm not afraid to go out and eat and have a nice meal. Matter of fact, that's me and my wife, uh, a tenor she don't feel like cooking, so we go out and eat. 
and we, and we go out and we have a nice meal. God has me. I, I can't speak for you. I can only speak for me. I can only speak what God has told me, what God told me to go, what God told me to do. It's not predicated on anything anybody has to say. It's based on what God has said to me and my relationship with him. And what he tells me, not always acceptable. And I don't care if it's acceptable to people or not. All I know is, is that I obey his word, I live by principle, and guess what? I receive the benefits. So what does the word say? Why do I know? Why do I choose God over the Constitution? I, I know our, our whole government is based on the Constitution of the United States of America. Every time there's an argument, they go to the Constitution. Go to the Supreme Court, they go to the Constitution. They're trying to fix gun laws. The gun is not the problem. The guns is not the problem. It's people. You can sit there and argue all day long. You can legislate. You can pass gun laws. You can take everybody's gun, and people will still find a reason to kill. Abel killed Cain. He found a reason to kill him. What did he use? He used a rock. So my trust is in who? God. There's a possibility I can die driving my car. Uh, 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 um, uh, I'm driving down the beltway, and I see people racing. And they, they span in front of me in a Challenger, a Mustang, and some other kind of car. And they're in and out of traffic. And one guy clipped another car. All of a sudden, there's six cars uh, uh, in an accident. And God comes out of his car. He's flying through the air. He's dead when he hit the ground. No regard for life. No regard. You, how are you going to legislate that? Unless God changes a life, unless a person comes to Jesus Christ and start abiding and living by the principles of the word of God and being taught what salvation really is and what it isn't, there will remain frustration in the body of Christ. Because people really don't want to be taught. All of us want to act like we know it all or we don't. There's things I don't know. There are things I can't answer. And I need the Holy Ghost to give me the instructions to show me. And there's some people that pour into my life that are great teachers that I listen to. And I say, man, that's powerful. Oh, that word was good. But the word is no good until I apply it in my life. And what do I apply? 17 and 17. Look what it says. Sanctify them. How are how they sanctified? Through thy what? What is truth? Thy word is what? Truth. What's truth? God's word. But it has to be rightly divided. You can't make up your own stuff. You need the Holy Spirit to give you insight, to tell you what it, to show you what it means so you can clearly, uh, 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 clearly, without argumentation, uh, 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 give uh, 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 a word to somebody of truth and not your opinion. And that's what people get in the day, a lot of opinions. Oh, I think it says this. I believe it says this. Listen, the word is plain, it's, it's straight, and if the Holy Ghost gives it to you, guess what? It, it, come, it, it comes straight at you. And when you obey it, it brings forth the fruit to the glorification of God. Look what Paul says to the Thessalonians. Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Look what Paul says to the Thessalonians. Everything in here points to the word of God. It points to what God has for his people. He wants his people to not be uh, uh, tied up in some cliches of people say, but in the word of God. I give people the word of God. People need the word of God. Children need the word of God. They need to understand what it says. I, can't, I just can't imagine. We celebrate, and we should celebrate, our children's accomplishments. We should celebrate their achievements. We should celebrate their birthdays. We should encourage them, which is great, but to never introduce your child to Jesus. And that child grows up agnostic or gnosis, or they grow up uh, 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 separated from God and stand before God. Why didn't you tell me if they could say? Why didn't you keep giving it to me? I know I didn't want to hear. How many times you didn't want to hear? It? And it took a lot of time for you to get it for yourself. It's the word that's going to deliver. It's the word that's going to keep. It's the word that can heal your marriage. It's the word that will heal your body. When does it do that? When you obey it and it's, and it's done in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
2 Thessalonians, um, I gave you 2, 15. Look what it said in the 15th verse. Therefore, brethren, Paul said, stand fast. Hold the tradition which you have been, what, taught, whether by word or by letter. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us and have given us an everlasting consolation and what kind of hope? Good hope, how? Through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good, what? Word and what? Work. The, you are established by the word of God. Will we obey it? I'm established. There are people that I come across, they just don't like me. And I used to wonder, I thought something was wrong with me. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm coming off wrong. Maybe, maybe it's my, my attitude or character. You know, uh, um, what is it? Some of the bus drivers, you know, they, cut, you know, they would cut me off in their buses. I wonder, what did I do to, what did I do to that person to, to cut me off in their buses? You know, uh, one of the bus drivers ran me off the road. I was trying to merge in on 228. They saw me coming. They were at the light and, and wouldn't let me in and ran me off on the shoulder. And I said, what in the world did happen? What did I do to, to get that? And you know what the Lord said? The Lord said that that spirit, it's a spirit. Remember our warfare is not against what? Flesh and blood against principalities and powers where? That some people are just not going to like you because of what's in you. And there's a warfare that happens. And people will say things. You know, when I was working, I was, I was uh, supervising a whole group. And with certain people that just made up their mind, they're going to make my job hard. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me why they did that. But now I realize it's because they was of another what? Spirit. And, and it was combating. But it's not what they do. Hear me. It's not how they act. It's your response to their actions that will determine the outcome of that situation. Doesn't mean you cower. I'm not going to let you disrespect me. I will talk to you in a clear, concise manner to get the point across. But I'm going to do it how? In love. Just warfare. And you got to understand it. When you start obeying the word, the enemy going to throw everything at you. And how, what are he going to throw at you? Shoe leather. What I mean by that? People. How you handle it will determine the outcome. Whether it's your husband, your children, friends, strangers, or bosses. I live by the word. I practice the word. The word said, this person ain't treat me right. It's not, everything is going bad, and I, I, I feel it in my spirit. What do I do? I used to get mad about it, talk about it, gossip about it, tell everybody about it, and the problem didn't solve itself. But when I started praying for my enemies, praying for those that persecute me, praying for those that say, oh, man, the evil against me, and turning it to God's hand, God began to turn that thing around. Now, even in the midst of that situation, I don't feel it anymore. It just bounced off like water on a duck's back. And I walk, I keep walking, and I realize that I have no right to hate anybody. I have no right to talk about people. I have no right, because the word says I have no right. And if I respond by the word of God, I'm going to get the benefits of the word. What's, what's the benefits? I tell you, you can't buy peace. Can anybody buy peace? Can you tell me where I can buy peace? I'm looking for peace. I've been all over the world. I don't contain all kind of material wealth. I got money in the bank, nice car, got a nice lawn going. My yard is so pretty. My grass is so pretty. People stop by to look at it. Oh, that grass is so green and pretty. How you get it like that? I mean, it's so pretty. But guess what? Don't mean nothing because you can't buy peace. Peace comes through God, through Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. I am so, I am so, I am, I am so happy that living out the word of God. This is what God wants you to hear today. God wants you to do what? Tell your neighbor, live out the word. He wants you to live it. Go to Titus. Sometimes I got to find ways that there's a book I don't go to often. 1269 in my Bible. Go to Titus. I'm telling you, we, we start living this word out, boy, we're going we, we to get some stuff. I ain't lying. Boy, our whole dynamic of environment going to change. I'm talking to people. I'm talking. Uh, God, is, God is opening up doors, and sometimes for weeks on end, I don't talk to nobody. I said, God, what you doing? He said, I want you to spend time with me praying for him. I want you to spend time with me worshiping. 
I mean, we haven't had music so long, I have my own songs now. I mean, I should, I should, I should write them down so I can get somebody to sing them. I got so many songs lined up. Titus 1 and 9. Look what it says in the ninth verse. Boy, this, you, under, you need to underline this. Holding fast. In other words, keep close. The faithful, what kind of word? Faithful word as he has been taught. You've been taught that he may be able by what kind of doctrine? Sound doctrine, both to exalt, that means to encourage, and to convince who? The gainsayer. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the, of the circumcision, talking about the Jews. So what kind, what kind? He said faithful word. The word of God is what? Faithful. It would accomplish whose will? How you, only way you're going to know God's will is spend time with him. Stop asking people, well, what do you think God's will is for my life? What do you think I, what do you think I should do? I, you know, you're asking another human being. Sometimes they ain't got a relationship with God. They ain't got a prayer life. They don't read the word. And you're going to ask for their advice? Who's, who's the lunatic? I'm going to go to God. And 99% of the time, God takes me to his word. His word gives me my instructions. Who, what, is, what about his word? I didn't give it to you. We got to give you these last scriptures before we close out. Go to Hebrews 4 and 12. Boy, you can tell I, I am, I am, I, I'm, I'm living this thing. I'm living this thing. And I'm experiencing the awesomeness of God. 4 and 12, you know it very well. It said, for the word of God is what? Quick. And what? Powerful. And sharper than any two-edged swords, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow. You can't, you can't fool God. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. So no matter what a person sees, God knows. He knows the reason you're doing it. He knows the reason you say it. And so tell you, this is me honest with yourself. Honest with yourself brings deliverance. Stop trying to work in somebody else's life, thinking about what they think. That, that's witchcraft. When you have already determined what they think without ever talking to them, that's witchcraft. I think, I think they're saying this. And so you are acting on a thought, guess what, that they never spoke to you, and you're acting on that thought as though they said it. It's witchcraft. So when a thought comes like that, and I ain't talked to the person, and I'm trying to determine what they said, and they didn't say it, and it's, I know it's witchcraft. The Bible said, cast down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against what? Against the word of God. Y'all got it? Cast it down. If you haven't talked to the person personally, stop going on what somebody else is saying. Because everybody not truthful. And everybody get the story twisted up. And by the time you get it, it will change so much, it becomes a twisting. But if you have prayer life, the Holy Spirit will tell you what's right and what is not right. Y'all don't believe that, do you? The Holy Spirit will tell you. It will tell you what's right and what's not right. It is a discerner of what? The intent of the heart. So I learned how to cast it down. Okay, um, go to um, 11 and 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Here's, here's, a, here's something you need to, you already know, but for your hearing, you need to hear it again. Hebrews 11 and 6, we're almost done. Boy, I tell you, I'm getting excited because God's word is so good to me. He said, but without what? Faith, it's impossible to do what? Stop. Come on, what you want me to do? If you don't have faith in God's word, you can't please him. You're not going to operate by it. You're going to operate by your flesh. Come on, let's be real about this. Stop faking it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to operate by it. You're going to operate by what you believe. It will be manifested in your life. But I, don't, I don't know why we're not getting this. It said, without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he what? 
When I go to God with my situation, with my problem, with my challenge, with the event of the day, and it doesn't seem like nothing happening, what should I do? Start worshiping. Start worshiping. It's uncomfortable. Boy, it puts you in a place outside of your, 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 your human ability, and it puts you in a place that all you got, all you, excuse me, write, write English, uh, you call this major, uh, all you have is, uh, is, is, is to trust God, and you can't hold on to, I ain't got nothing to hold on to. I ain't got no, I can't hold on to my emotions. I can't hold on to my feelings. I can't hold on to my money. I can't hold on to my job and my pr I have nothing but what? God's word. And I tell people look at me like I'm crazy. Well, why you ain't doing it? I'm trusting. Wait for God to, to show me his word. What do you want me to do? I'm waiting on God to move. I'm waiting on God. How, how are you waiting? I'm waiting, in, I'm waiting in patience. I'm waiting till, how, how are you doing that? By worshiping. Sometimes you don't hear nothing worship. Boy, I tell you, I ain't get no amen from that one. When nothing happened, what do I do? Go in your room. Find you a place. Put, some, put a song on or something. Get in there. I don't need music when I worship. I come up with my own songs. And they sound pretty good. It may not sound good to you, but they sound pretty good to me when I worship God. Okay. Uh, go back to Hebrew. Uh, go ahead, you Hebrews. Go to Hebrews 1 and 3. Man, keep thinking about all the things he done. Man, keep thinking about all the things he doing. He don't realize he ain't doing nothing. That's that what God allowed him to do. And whatever God allowed is to bring forth the fullness of his word. That's why all this stuff happening. It said, as, in the day, as it was in the days of Noah, shall it what? Be in the last day. Why, why are we so surprised? Uh, Timothy said, men shall be, uh, Timothy said, men shall be lovers of own selves more than lovers of God. The Bible said there should be a great falling away from the faith. Why? Because they turn away from the word of God. Why is that surprising you? Why surprise you that a guy can go into his elementary school and shoot kids and kill teachers? We don't want it to happen. Well, why is that surprising to you? Because they have simply left the principles of God. So look at one and three. We got five minutes. Look what it says. Who being the brightness of his glory, talking about Jesus, and the express image of his person. Woo Upholding how many things? All what things by the power of his word, by the word of what? His power. In my life, whatever, this is how I live my life now. Whatever God has allowed, I learn to accept it. Oh boy, ain't gonna get, nobody heard that. I learned to say, okay, God, if you, I'm your child. If you, listen, think about your child. You want to do what's best for your child, even though they don't like the, what you do sometimes. They don't like it, but you do what's best for them because they don't know. They, 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 both of you have two different opinions. But God knows what's best. And so whatever he allows in my life, he's either growing me or, or he want me to worship. That's the only two areas I got. You know, he, he growing me or he want me to worship. And so I'm learning, okay, God, I'm going to stand still. I'm not going to move because I realize that you allow this. Let me stay in it and let me worship you through it. Or you give me revelation of what's going on or how to respond to that event or challenge in my life. Okay, go to James uh, 121, and we're almost done. James 121. Hallelujah. The word, the word, it's the word of God. I don't know how many people telling people, the word of God is faithful. It cannot fail. It will produce when you obey it. It can't fail. In my life, the word can't fail if I obey it. It must produce fruit to the glory of God. James 1.21, look what it says in the 21st verse. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and su superfluity of naughtiness. That word superfluity means uh, excessive amount. And receive meekness. The what? Engraft. Engraft means to insert. Engraft word of God, which is able to do what? Save your soul. Keep you out of a whole bunch of situations when you learn to depend on God's word. Because God is his word. Remember John 1 and 1? In the beginning was the word. The word was God. And the word was with. God is his word. So when I'm living, I'm living out what, what brings him glory. And everything that I do should bring God 
glorification of God. Go to 1 John 2, 25, and we're going to end out, end out there. 1 John 2, 25. I live by these principles. That's why I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid. Whatever God allowed in my life is for his purpose and for his reason that he allows it. The devil can't do anything to me. I don't talk about the devil. I don't worry about the devil. I'm not concerned about the devil. I'm not concerned what he's doing. All I know is, is that he has no power in my life. Some things that happen, you brung on yourself. You have to learn how to deal with it, and you learn how to deal with it through repentance, confession, and, and worship. John 1, 2, 25 says these words, and this is the promise that he has promised us even what? Eternal life. But why live miserable down here on earth? Why live a miserable life? Every day you wake up, you're miserable. You're not happy going to work. You're not happy with people you work with. You're not happy with traffic. You're not happy with anything. You can't even sit on the backyard, back porch to be happy. I refuse to live my life like that. I refuse to live my life in drudgery when God has given me everything that pertains to life, joy, peace, and happiness. Why should I concern myself? When the Lord opens up doors for me to share the gospel, I do it with enthusiasm, I do it respectfully, and I do it with a concise understanding of what it is I'm trying to relay to the person that's listening to me. What changed my life? The word of God would change my behavior when I respond and obey the word of God. What would change your future and which way you go? Like these kids getting out of college, what do you want to do once you get out? Where do you want to work? Where do you want to live? They got all of these decisions to make. And some have made bad decisions. I can't tell you how many people graduate from college and wind up at the post office. Four-year degrees. Some managers, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I tell you, the best way to get direction, trust the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge God, and he will do what? Do you believe that word this morning? The word cannot fail. Tell your neighbor that. The word cannot fail. When you trust in it, it will bring forth the desired fruit and purpose that God has designed for you. Now, what God has designed for me is not for you. What God has designed for you is not for me. But inherently, when we do the will of God, they all work together and they lock in to a form of a solid, uh, firm a group of, of, of family being citizens of the kingdom of God. Amen. Hand me that communion, please. So, with that being said, God's word is what? Faithful. I live by it. I'm enjoy I am enjoying my life. I found the most beautiful parks by the water. And not many mosquitoes out today, so, you know, you can go sit by the water. I got some parks that I didn't even know exist on lakes, beautiful lakes, nice picnic areas, um, playground. Uh, there's a couple of parks that have horses you can ride. Um, I just have found so many things. And I go to a lot of the, in Maryland, there are a lot of uh, places you can go to that, uh, that tell you about the history of slaves. I, I go to some of these places and I read the plaques and I see the houses in Mont Montello, Marcello, if I'm not saying it right. Uh, it, that intrigues me of what, how they survive. How did they overcome? How in the world you get brutalized and yet they didn't know as much word as we know today. They weren't taught to the principles that we receive today and yet they held on to have faith in God. Your result your being here is not because of you. It's somebody else prayed for you and prayed for me that put me in a place 
to open my eyes, to bring me to a place that I was lost, a sinner, on my way to hell without God. I like to remind myself of those that weren't able to have homes, weren't able to raise families, children separated from parents, weren't able to go to school and get an education, and yet we have been afforded by the grace of God free education. We've been afforded by the grace of God to live in homes you never thought you would own, cars you never thought you would drive, places that you have been and traveled around the world, and we're still not satisfied with life. There's something wrong with that picture. So I put my trust in God's word. Come on, stand to your feet. Those of you that are watching online, we're going to take communion. If you have juice or bread or cracker, please take time to go get it now as we honor God today. Come on, honor God today. Honor him for his goodness. Honor him for his grace. Honor him for his majesty. Honor him that he didn't give up on us. Amen. Honor him that, he, like, like a, a bishop, I um, um, uh, can't think of his name, Long used to say, it could have been the other way. But thank God it worked out according to his plan. And guess what we did? We received it. We received God's plan. And now you ought, to, you ought to be enjoying life like I'm enjoying life. I told one person, I may not have the most of everything, but I have the best of everything. I have the best of life. I have the best of joy. I have the best of peace. Why? Because I learned to operate by the word of God. Amen. So share that with somebody today. Tell them, stop complaining, groping. Go to the Word of God. Uh, we, always, we always read um, my favorite before we pray, uh, Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 is my go-to um, verse when I'm praying. And he says, be careful for nothing, <laughs> but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall, underline, keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We go to take communion. And we realize what it says in 1 Corinthians. We understand what it says in Matthew. That you came to earth to die, to atone for our sins. And your body was broken as we have broken this cracker that we hold in our hands. It is symbolic, God, to remember that it's not by works of righteousness, lest any man should boast, but simply by the grace of God that we have received sanctification, justification, and redemption. And we have received the blood of Jesus Christ that have relieved us from the wrath of God that cometh on the children of disobedience. And so may we take communion honestly, repenting of our sins, anything we said, done, or acted on, or didn't do, Father, we ask for forgiveness. And I can say that, but each person has to say that individually from their own heart. I repent. Forgive me of my sins, whatever it was. Wash me and cleanse me with thy precious blood in Jesus' name that we do not take this lightly because the Bible says many have died not discerning or understanding the Lord's body and the reason that we do this in remembrance of you, Father. We take no credit because it was you working in our life and you're still working in our lives, and we're so grateful for that. We give you praise, we give you glory and honor as we thank you, the body that was torn and ripped and took our sins on your behalf to save us from the wrath of God. We thank you this morning and we bless you in Jesus' name. Everybody say it, amen. The partake of the symbolicness of Christ's body. Blood. This juice represents the blood of Christ. The Bible says, I search for the answer. It says the life is in the blood. And it was required by God to atone for the sins of every believer that would ever been born of a woman. 
The Bible said without the shedding of blood in Hebrews, there could be no forgiveness of sins. And in order for blood to be um, given, it had someone had to die. And that one was Jesus Christ. He came to die that we may have life and have it more abundantly through Jesus. So, Father, we do this in remembrance of you. We do this, Lord, with respect, honor, and praise and worship that you gave your life that we may have life. Now, Father, we remember this and can do this as often as we can. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, let's partake. And we do it with thanksgiving and with joy. Now, in the end of this message, let's all lift our hands. Father, I ask you a blessing on their lives. I pray that you will bless them throughout this week. Open up doors that you seem necessary, close doors that are unnecessary. Give them favor with mankind. Give them favor in the name of Jesus Christ. And may we be careful for nothing but everything by supplication, prayer, and thanksgiving be made. That we may experience the peace and the joy that comes from obedience to your word. May we be able to articulate the word of God to an unbeliever or a believer in a way that would encourage, uplift, and inspire, or give information. We do this in the name of Jesus Christ that our purpose for being here is to really be an example for you as citizens of the kingdom of God. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. You're dismissed in the name of Jesus. Have a wonderful Sunday in Jesus' name.